Honesty, passion, experience. It's Timberwolves Explosion, hosted on the sportstuff.com. And now, your host, Paladino Joey. Hello again, Timberwolves fans. Are you ready for the explosion of Timberwolves basketball? I am your host, Paladino Joey, or Joey Awajan. Timberwolves Explosion is available on thesportstuff.com, iTunes, Stitcher, and Double Twist. Hey, nice pleasure to be back on board once again today. Timberwolves have a 3 in one week and do a little bit of stomping in the three victories. Yeah, the Timberwolves are stomping fools right now. It is uh, unbelievable. You get, the, you get the game where the Wolves led by as much as 41 against Cleveland, ultimately win that game. By a final score of 127.99. Wow, 28-point victory. Should have been more, but, eh, you know, let the Cavs save a tiny bit of face. A quiet, kind of a low-scoring game in Boston where the Wolves haven't won since, apparently, Carl Anthony Towns was nine years old. So, yeah, just do the math there. The Wolves crush New Orleans, and they take away, they pull away anyway, against the Oklahoma City Thunder to wrap things up during the course of the week after the Cavs game. So, not bad. Uh, this team's looking pretty special right now. Jimmy Butler is looking more and more and more and more like something extremely special for this club for many years to come, hopefully. Hopefully he's not on his way out when the contract runs out. That's the, always the fear. Boston game 91-84. Let's get this one out of the way, unfortunately. A quiet, nonchalant kind of game, I'd have to say. Unfortunately, it was the first of a back-to-back, so you figure, uh-oh. But then again, I did pick the Wolves to lose, to, uh, lose this game, and in good faith, I picked the Wolves to beat the New Orleans Pelicans. And, well, it did go that way, I suppose. Again, the Wolves just never win in Boston, even when they stunk, so it's kind of funny. But then again, they didn't really stink for very long, did they? <laughs> Once Brad Stevens took over, they stayed competitive. Uh, you know, it wasn't the most exciting game ever. Nobody particularly shot very well. Uh, Jalen Brown, of course, the guy that the Celtics took over Chris Dunn, which made us all happy at the time about a year and a half ago now. <laughs> yeah, fairly quiet. 4 of 15 from the floor. It wasn't the most exciting game. It wasn't the best played game ever, but the Celtics got the job done. Uh, Marcus Smart and Kyrie Irving pretty much led the way through this one. And of course, Jason Tatum had the dunk of the night over Carl Anthony Towns. Just incredible, but it was only half his points for the whole night. Yeah, uh, wound up with only 4 points, 2 of 7 from the floor. So that was it. He had the big highlight play, and that's about it. Uh, the Celtics rookie still a long way to go. 30 minutes and only 4 points, and that's about it. Again, clanging 3-pointers. Uh, Celtics did not shoot well from 3-point range at all. You'd, you'd hope the Wolves could take advantage of it, but the Celtics defense was just spectacular. Um, the uh, the new bird, Jabari Bird, is on the G League team, so we didn't get to see him. <laughs> Gordon Hayward, yeah, unfortunately, and Marcus Morris also out. Uh, Celtics shot 16, 16% from the floor, 6 of 36. That's a lot of 3-point attempts, and only 6 made... 40% overall from the floor. So, and not a fun game to watch in that sense. Wolves only shot 37%. Made a cut, made one more three than the Celtics, but didn't attempt as many. So, wound up with 30% or so. Again, uh, you know, just kind of a defensive battle. It was nice to see a little bit of Thibs' defense, I suppose. But at the same time, the Celtics flat out just didn't shoot well. This was not a very fun game to watch. Uh, Carl was awesome in the game. He was definitely the... Uh, Definitely the highlight of the Timberwolves throughout the night. A 20-20 performance. 25-23. He posted up. He made a three-pointer. Only one, but some spot-up shots. Uh, turnaround jumpers. And, of course, a couple spectacular dunks along the way. He was by far the highlight of the Wolves at this game. Again, 25 of 23. Jimmy Butler, very quiet game, but not certainly not an indicator of what was to come during the course of the week. Uh, Joel Crawford also extremely good off the bench. He made four of five threes, keeping the Wolves in the game, but the Wolves ultimately do not win this one. So we will quickly move forward from this pretty, enter uh, pretty unentertaining game, uninspiring night, Friday, January the 5th, just about a month before the Super Bowl. Oh, still... Still getting excited about that one. Obviously, we can't wait. It's, yeah, ugh, we just cannot wait, at least for the game this weekend. Let's get started with that one. But the Wolves do a back-to-back -back January the 6th, and here we go. Wolves' second chance to wear those green uniforms, the Northern Lights uniforms, as we like to call them, because that's what they represent, the Aurora Borealis and all that, and Allies North, and now, of course, the Minnesota, the, the A is like the arrow pointing north and all that. That's cool. Wow, this was a fun victory. The Wolves pull away early, and it was just it was similar to the Indiana game. And the Wolves suddenly are starting to do this. 
Indiana, and the Lakers, the other team, of course. You remember how the Wolves just pulled away from Indiana on New Year's Eve, and then on New Year's Day, the Wolves had a big pull away against the Lakers. Neither of those games finished quite at the super blowouts as, say, the Cleveland game, but hey, we'll take it. And, of course, New Orleans, the Wolves win by 18 there. Just another similar game where the Wolves just start hot, and they just roll. And that seems to be a trend with the Timberwolves of late, which is extremely exciting. You're seeing more and more nights like this. Uh, New Orleans, again, saving face by winning by nine. They beat the Wolves by nine points in the fourth quarter to make it slightly closer to not, not as ugly. I won't say it made it more interesting. It just made it closer. Carl did wonderful against his against these guys who have been his nemesis. <laughs> of course, DeMarcus Cousins and Anthony Davis. Carl had a pretty spectacular block on Anthony Davis pretty early. Uh, DeMarcus Cousins was excellent throughout the game, 23-15. and 15, But he got sloppy with the ball. He knocked the ball away from him and all that. Uh, he did block three shots. Anthony Davis blocked two. Seven turnovers for DeMarcus Cousins. A bit of a mess for him, and that was helpful for the Timberwolves. Who won the turnover battle 15 to 9. I'm surprised the, <laughs> the I'm surprised the Pelicans only had 15 turnovers, but the Wolves overall from the floor were pretty damn outstanding. They made half of their threes and they made almost half of their shots, about 49% from the floor, 50 overall, and 90% from the free throw line again, uh, 19 to 21. So again, that's key. And that's again if the Wolves want to be successful in the postseason, that's what it's all about, getting to the free throw line and making it simple. Uh, kind of simple, but I guess it's Obviously huge. Uh, the Pelicans even did that too, but certainly was not their night. And that's good for the Wolves. Uh, Andrew Wiggins showing more and more of that assertiveness. Assertiveness, pardon me. He even added three blocks in the game and two steals. Five like nice little stats there defensively. Even added eight rebounds in the game. Again, Andrew Wiggins had a pretty positive week, I'd have to say. This was a joy to watch. Kind of a total team effort type of a night. You didn't see Jimmy like dominate that type of thing, even though he had some nice moments throughout the game, and he's more than capable of doing that. The momentum shots and such. Uh, Carl's three-point range keeps getting better and better. He made all three of his threes in the game. Man, Gorby, Gorgie Jang made two three-pointers, and he didn't miss any. Just an overall fun night. He just kind of put your feet up and relax and enjoy. And that's basically what the mode was throughout this game, I would have to say. And at this stage, Jeff Cheeg had not returned yet. He would not return until uh, the Oklahoma City Thunder game. And not bad, not bad. Um, but Tyus Jones, again, at doing what he does, you know, he doesn't put up sexy numbers, that he gets steals, he forces turnovers, takes away passing lanes, and of course runs a smooth offense. A lot of people like to say he runs the offense more smoothly than when Jeff Teague is in there. Sure, but you still want to have Jeff Teague because he's got that really nice smooth shot. Um, spot up shooting and all that. And of course, just kind of pull up three pointers pull-up jumpers, and the floaters. Those are the kind of things you did not see from Ricky Rubio, and you don't really see from Tyus Jones either. So Jeff Teague brings an element to this team that is extremely valuable come playoff time, and I'm not complaining about Jeff Teague at all. I'm very happy he's on the roster, particularly in the playoffs and late in games when you need those floaters. Maybe you can draw a foul and such, and Jeff Teague's the kind of point guard that's going to make his free throws. Sure, Tyus Jones does as well, but it's not necessarily his game, necessarily attacking the basket as much as, say, a Jeff Teague potentially can. Uh, Tyus Jones capable of hitting a three here and there, but he doesn't always take the shot either. He's kind of looked on more of as a game manager type of point guard out there, but he's a hell of a good game manager, I would have to say, when it comes to running the offense. So he's a change of pace kind of guy. Maybe slow the offense down a teeny tiny bit, but at the same time, smart. Kind of hit hit the cutter and all that, backdoor passes and all that, which is becoming more and more popular. Jimmy Butler hitting Andrew Wiggins for plays like that. Carl Anthony Towns going into the basket and all that. It's just, it's wonderful to see. And this was just a easygoing, fun game from the get-go. Of course, it never, <laughs> it never goes without a little drama from DeMarcus Cousins. Every time he's called for a foul, he gets upset and starts crying and whining. And that's pretty much the story from DeMarcus Cousins, but, but I suppose you could have said that about Carl Anthony Towns not that long ago, but the defensive focus from Carl is so different now. Uh, he's taking away shots more so than he did in the past. You're seeing, you're finally seeing it click with this team, and that seems to be what the case is. The team is starting to click now, starting to gel, and as they always were saying, yeah, it, it takes time, sometimes a couple months, when it's a major change like bringing in a Jimmy Butler versus a Zach Levine versus a Ricky Rubio. Um, of course, again, Jeff Teague instead of Rubio, stuff like that. And Jimmy Butler going from a guy who was a distributor now to a guy who is a legitimate MVP candidate. Uh, it's plain as day that Jimmy Butler is the best player on the Wolves right now. As good as Carl's playing, Jimmy Butler is the guy. He's the go-to guy in the fourth quarter. He's the overall 
face of the franchise right now. And it's kind of cool to say it because the franchise is playing pretty amazing basketball with Jimmy Butler as that guy. There were complaints early on, me and Vince Germano kind of, you know, back channels conversation about, yeah, we're not necessarily completely pleased with how this is going. We think Butler might be a little bit of a ball hog, this and that, and he might be sending the growth of the Andrew Wiggins, Carl Anthony Townses, and, and they're not responding well to it, and this and that. And then something happened, and Butler just went from a guy who was <laughs> a guy who was distributing, but then taking this shot and that shot, and maybe stunning the growth of other guys, to a guy who said, bleep it, you can't bleep with me, basically. And not to the players, but to the opponents. And then, you know, yeah, not to the young wolves, but to the opponents. And then just went off and got amazing. And then and then Carl and Andrew have followed in kind, slowly but surely. Carl's added the defense, and his offense has been ignited. When you play good defense, you ignite the offense. That's an old saying in the NBA that's very much in existence. Coaches say it. Uh, color commentators say it. And you know what? They're right. Andrew's defense started to show improvement not too long ago, and it, you're, it's noticeable. And then you're seeing a little more assertiveness offensively. Uh, not consistently necessarily from Andrew Wiggins, but you're seeing a little more aggressiveness. You're seeing more uh, swag. I don't like that word at all, but it's there. You're seeing more swag from Andrew Wiggins that you didn't see from in, in the past. You know, he, he puts these dribble, he puts up these, uh, it's kind of a catch and shoot off the dribble. And uh, Jeff Teague obviously brings that as well. And he's so smooth with that shot when Jeff Teague does those little, off the dribble catch and shoot plays, and that's the best way to do it. If you're not, if it's not like a full catch and shoot where they're delivering the ball to you, when you just stop there and then let it go, it's also high percentage in comparison to just pounding the ball and forcing it up. And you you see you'll still see some poor shot selection from Andrew Wiggins, but it's improving. He's attacking the basket a little bit more, and you're seeing more. You know, you're just seeing more precision out of Andrew Wiggins' game. They're responding to Jimmy Butler now. They're responding to Coach Thibodeau now as well with the defense. They're realizing it works. It works. Dare I say the words, trust the process. Remember, as I said earlier, question the process because I didn't like the way things were going. And I, I wasn't calling for Thibodeau's head. But I was saying, okay, so what is going on here? What's the plan? What's the direction? Because why aren't these guys responding to it? And then all of a sudden, they started to. And you started seeing signs. And it's like a stock that slowly starts to trend up. Trend up. Trend up. Trend up. Just gently trending up. Nothing crazy like, oh my god. But then all of a sudden you have games like the Pacers. And the Lakers. And then you have the game against Cleveland. The game that will be a springboard for this franchise as we head forward. The springboard. The springboard. That should be the title of this episode. If I because <laughs> uh, sometimes I I do this on the fly because sometimes I have the name of the show right there. Other times I wait till I do the show to officially name the the title of the episode, and that's what this episode is going to be: the springboard. January eighth, two thousand eighteen, was the beginning of this new franchise heading in the direction that a lot of us believe they can. They are winning the division by four games over the Portland Trail Blazers, four and a half over the Oklahoma City Thunder. The Wolves just recently wrapped up the season series. The game that I said will finally end the drought against the Cleveland Cavaliers. A major drought against this Cleveland team, particularly since LeBron James got there. The Wolves have not, you know, got back there, we'll say. The Wolves had not won a game against the Cavaliers since LeBron James returned. And you know what? It was a great basketball team the whole time. So, I mean, they've been to the NBA Finals every single year since LeBron's been there. They went to the, the Miami Heat went to the NBA Finals every year LeBron was there. So that's a streak that's probably not going to end this year either. But to put the thrashing on this team the way the Timberwolves did was unbelievable. Something of legend. You saw games like this when the Minnesota Timberwolves played the Chicago Bulls in, say, 2000 when Tim Floyd was coach. When Randy Brown was still the point guard, I believe he was still there. You had players on that team that were either too young or they, it, it was like an expansion team, basically. You had a couple of draft pick type guys that were unproven. They were just getting started. And then you had the kind of guys that were cast off from other teams or they were just old remnants from the dynasty. But it was Bill Winnington type players. It was Randy Brown. It wasn't Scottie Pippen, Horace Grant. It wasn't obviously Rodman. It wasn't Tony Kukoc. It was those guys. The guys you don't hear about ever. The guy who scored maybe two points 
because Michael hit him for a spot up three in the fourth quarter. Oh, there we go. He made a name for himself in that game because it was a big shot. Steve Kerr was already gone to San Antonio where he kept winning championships. For <laughs> that guy he won too many times. That son of a gun. Uh, he won four titles in a row. The first player since the 60s to do that because there's three, the second three-peat from Michael and then obviously won the title in 99 with the uh, Twin Tower Duncan uh, Men in Black Spurs. The Men in Black. I still remember that, uh, what was it, Slam Magazine or something. David Robinson and Tim Duncan. I was like, oh boy, this is going to be scary. These guys are going to make memories in the NBA. And they did. They did. But to the point here, I apologize. Uh, LeBron James, minus 39. Minus 39, ladies and gentlemen. What? I mean, that's f- f- freaking awful. <laughs> minus 39, the worst in his career. We gave LeBron James the worst game of his career. And it's not just because LeBron was so awful, so awful. We'll add a New York or New Jersey accent to it there. But it's because the Wolves were so awesome. Yeah, they were. Uh, Kevin Love played the same defense he played here when was it Wiggins drove to the basket on a delivery from Butler. <laughs> Kevin Love, uh, 20 minutes. One of seven from the floor. One of four from three-point range. So he obviously just made one three in the game. Two rebounds. Yeah, Kevin Love playing the five. And he was uh, on the bench for uh, quite a while after that. Uh, Wade was respectable. Uh, LeBron James had a highlight block on uh, Tyus Jones, and then Tyus Jones responded right after that, after he got another steal and a breakaway as he dunked. He actually dunked the ball. You don't really see Tyus dunk very often, but it was nice aggression as LeBron was LeBron was coming after him like he came after uh, Andre Iguodala in the 2016 Finals. One of my favorite moments of watching the NBA. You know, I love the old days, this and that. LeBron, obviously... That was like old days type of play. It was unbelievable, the hustle, and, a, and a, just chasing down Andre Iguodala. That's when I knew the Cavaliers were going to beat the Warriors because it was, it was plain as day to me that the Warriors had lost whatever magic they had until the next year. Damn it. I hated it. Um, this was a statement game for this franchise because you beat a team you hadn't beaten in forever. This is the <laughs> fourth, three-time defending Eastern Conference champions. This is a... Player in LeBron James who's been to eight straight NBA Finals. It's just, uh, it was at seven, pardon me. That's insane. Um, just absolutely nuts. Uh, <laughs> he's on his way to probably an eighth. We'll see. Unless the Celtics can do something about it. Their defense is amazing, so they just might. And I hope they beat the Warriors, but we'll see. Uh, Todd Gibson added a double-double in the game. Uh, and Andrew Wiggins, very assertive. Again, off the dribble, crossover, this type of thing. I'm dragging this segment, but it's been an enjoyable one. 25 points for Andrew Wiggins, 19 for Carl Anthony Towns. Jimmy Butler actually slapped the floor with his hand as LeBron was bringing the ball up. And it was just a wonderful sign. Wonderful sight, as uh, Jimmy Butler's success rate against LeBron has been amazing. So all we got to do is get to the finals, and we'll probably win it. So that's all we got to do. You know, which is pretty easy, right? We'll just get to the finals and win. So as long as we make it and we don't have to play the Celtics, yeah. So come on, come, come Cavs. Let's, let's see what you got. Because Jimmy Butler's success rate against LeBron has been amazing. Uh, amazing <laughs> reciprocal statistic here. Jimmy Butler plus 39 for the game. How funny is that? <laughs> Doesn't get much better than that. Plus 39. <laughs> plus 39. That sounds familiar, doesn't it? Compared to minus 39. Sounds familiar. Oh, LeBron. <laughs> you know, I love LeBron. I love what he brings to this game. <sighs> Lord have mercy. And, you know, and it's like for the longest time, you watch this, the momentum shots from Jimmy Butler. Just the swag. And, I, again, I hate that word so much. Oh, I hate it. It's overused. It's stupid. It's like half my age. I don't care about it at all. But it was there, and it was real. It's the real thing. It's not just wearing a t-shirt that says swag. It was just, it was actions speaking louder than words. You don't even have to say the word. Just look at the action and you'll see it. And that's what Jimmy Butler brought to the floor. 21 points. Yeah, but oh, those aren't that big of numbers. Yeah, but he was plus 39. And he made more than half his shots. Four of six from three. Momentum, momentum, momentum. You don't need to say location, location, location. It was momentum, momentum, momentum. It was just too easy. Jimmy Butler was just downright amazing throughout the night. Wiggins, 25 points and only 31 minutes in the game. Again, the, the that word, the, the S word that is not S-H, it's S-W. Andrew, again, off the dribble. He took one really stupid shot, though. Like, he had two guys draping over him, forcing it up. Okay, you're taking a, a little card from, you're taking a little card from Jimmy Butler there. 
I get it. He's really trying to emulate his teammate now because he's seeing what his teammate's all about. And that's proof that he's responding to him, but that was not a good shot, Andrew. Come on now. <laughs> he forced one up. But throughout the night, though, wonderful. Uh, he was making shots he was missing before. Uh, I don't know if he's been with the shooting coach or not, but regardless who he's been with, something's happening with Andrew Wiggins, and he's looking better. Uh, his shot is more precise. His selection is better. And he's more crisp, you know, off the dribble, catch and shoot off the dribble. Literally like a kind of a crossover type of move with the ball. Not really a major crossover, but just giving himself a shot there without forcing it. It wasn't a forced shot. It was just a solid shot most of the time throughout the night. Uh, long twos, unfortunately, on some of them. But again, attacking the basket with authority as well. And even getting to the free throw line. And he's starting to make some free throws as well, which is very helpful for the Timberwolves. Please keep making your free throws, Andrew, okay? That's greatly appreciated if he can keep that up. Jimmy Butler is just downright unbelievable. I mean, I, how do you not love Jimmy Butler? How do you not love Jimmy Butler? You know, like you would say, Jimmy uh, Andrew Wiggins is my favorite player. Carl Anthony Towns is your favorite player, this and that. You know what? It's official. Jimmy Butler is my favorite player. <laughs> it took a while, but Jimmy Butler is my favorite player on the Timberwolves. And it's hands down right now. Uh, I'm just, I'm so impressed with what he brings and the strength and all that. And just his, 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 just his athletic arrogance. You know, it's like people said, oh, you know, you hate the Warriors arrogance, so we're going to be like that when we're good. Uh, no, I don't think so. And and that's the good part. You, you know, there was the line where you can't bleep with me, this and that. What was that? The uh, That was the Laker game, I believe. No, no, that was a little, that was a Portland game, Portland game. Unnecessary, but that was just one little thing. He's not dancing on the floor. Literally, all, Steph Curry might as well have urinated on the Warriors, uh, on the uh, Warriors, might as well have urinated on the Oklahoma City Thunder logo. I mean, it was so disrespectful. Uh, and nobody, nobody freaking said anything about that. Nobody even batted an eye yet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Jimmy Butler one time says you can't bleep with me and of course we're all offended I know I don't like the cursing necessarily but okay we'll just leave that alone just saying that was the only thing Butler really did that wasn't the best thing so far I, I gotta say I, I think he's been amazing He's he, he's got a little more of that weight in him more than like showing off too much and of course celebrating with his teammates not celebrating with himself and that's good let's go uh, Jan 10 Oklahoma City Thunder they were playing a back-to-back. -back. Uh, Westbrook was frustrated, ir uh, irritated, this and that. One little statistic I will say how Wiggins has sucked from the free throw line throughout the whole season, 63%. And again, please don't get mad at me. Those of you that might be listening that think I'm ripping Andrew Wiggins. 55% in December was his worst, probably, of his. it's got to be of his career. Uh, of course, the attempts dropped dramatically, too, in that month. Um, but now he's at 74 in January so far. So, okay. Yes. It's not amazing. It's not amazing, but it's progress. When a stock goes up, it's okay if it goes up slowly. It's easier to invest in that stock when it goes up slowly, isn't it? Because if it shoots up, you can't invest anything. It's too late. So look at it that way. So plunk down a couple of shares on Andrew Wiggins. He's on an uptrend. He's on an uptrend. So enjoy. Uh, 104.88 victory for the Wolves as we wrap up this segment. It's, it's long, it looks like. So it is what it is. And we'll preview some games after that <laughs> in segment number two like we always do. Wow. You thought the Celtics shot like crap. So did the Thunder. Whew. 6 of 25 from 3, 24%. Okay, eh, no, not real good. I guess they call him PG-13. That's Paul George. That's kind of cool, I guess. He stunk. He was clanging everything. Four of four, 5 of 14, pardon me. Carmelo Anthony, 5 of 19. Big shocker there. Eight three-points attempted. Might as well be Rashad McCants. Uh, Steve, Steven Adams didn't have his best game ever either. There was a foul called on Steven Adams when Jimmy Butler was going to the basket. Nice move and everything. It shows you how much respect Jimmy Butler has because Stephen Adam didn't, Adams, of course, uh, countrymen of Tene Brown and Levi Brown in New Zealand, um, he didn't even touch Jimmy Butler. Okay, so I'm being honest here. He didn't even touch him, but they still <laughs> called the foul on him. So, yeah, that's how much respect Jimmy Butler has in this league right now. Uh, yes, Russell Westbrook was amazing, and he had to be because everyone else was struggling throughout the game. Everyone. Uh, Jer Jeremiah Grant. My goodness, Jeremiah Grant. Jeremiah, whatever. Let's just say Jeremiah. I guess that's what his name officially is. Yuck. 20 minutes of five personal fouls and five rebounds. Y yay. <laughs> and one, one missed three-pointer. That's it. Um, so not a whole lot of help there for... Uh, for uh, Rusty. Rusty Westbrook. Russell Westbrook. Rusty Russell. 
He was rusty, all right. No, his teammates were. It was a rough game for all of them, to be quite honest. Uh, Carmelo and Paul. Carmelo and Paul were not very spectacular in the game. Clang, clang, clang. And some somebody named Terrence, Terrence Ferguson made one three-point attempt, and that's it. He was just clanging everything else throughout the night as well. And, yeah, that's all she wrote. Uh, fun night for the Wolves again. Carl Anthony Towns aggressive once again. Andrew Wiggins assertive at times. And he, he shot okay. Didn't get to the line very much, but was solid, was precise, was more crisp. Not dominant, but crisp. That's a word Marcus the Forecaster uses when my shooting is really good. It's crisp. And, you know, crisp. Because when it hit, goes right through the net. There's no bouncy bounce. There's no lucky roll. It's just... And that's what it was throughout the night for Andrew Wiggins. Uh, for the most part. When he was making his shots, they were nice. And it was a nice game. Uh, Jeff T got a nice little three-pointer made. It was his return. And he was, you know, limited minutes because he's still coming back from what could have been a devastating knee injury if that thing moved another quarter of a millimeter, I swear. That could have been a devastating injury. And we would have seen Jeff Teague in 2019. Not 18, 19, probably, with that one. Because it seems like that's been the case with uh, whenever somebody tears an ACL, they're out for 12 months or so these days in the NBA, unfortunately. Um, Because we have not seen Jabari Parker. We have not seen uh, Zach Levine yet. So do the math there. It's been a long time. Jimmy Butler dominant throughout the night. Very entertaining. Drawing fouls, getting to the line, and just being Jimmy Butler. 26 points, 8 assists. He made 11 of 12 free throws. It's not only does he get to the line, he makes them, you know. And Andrew's getting better. He's not there yet, but he's getting better. He's showing signs, and that's where the encouragement does come in. Jimmy Butler is just outstanding throughout the night. Just, ah, what a joy. Joy. You know, you can just hear the joy in my voice that I talk about Jimmy Butler right now. I've got the joy down in my heart. And I know I don't mean that in a bad... I'm not worshipping Jimmy Butler, but man, what an amazing... uh, What an amazing player he truly is. And it's like, the guy's in his prime, let's enjoy it. You know, I'm not worried about stunning anybody's growth because it's starting to look like they are growing now. They are responding and they're growing. They're responding. Oh boy, yeah, they are responding. We can officially trust the process. Hank, McCoy, Wayne Hunt, I'm talking to you. We can trust the process, Wayne Hunt. I'm, I'm all in when it comes to Thibodeau and Jimmy Butler leading this franchise. I said it. I'm all in when it comes to uh, Tom Thibodeau and Jimmy Butler leading this franchise. Nobody's perfect. <clears throat> Tom Thibodeau's far from perfect. He's obnoxious, this and that. But, again, he, he, it's working. Bottom line, it's working, and the wins are happening. This team is going to host the first round of the NBA playoffs, barring some type of a major disappointment or an inc- insane surge by the Oklahoma City Thunder that I, I'm not convinced is coming. The talent is there, Sure. But are they going to surge that much? I don't know. Uh, we might see, be seeing the second division championship in Wolves history. Wouldn't that be something? Remember, we were the final division champions for the Midwest division. Now we're in the Northwest division. Yes. And we're winning it. So, bottom line, we're winning the Northwest division. So, <clears throat> let's enjoy it while we have it. And let's keep rolling. Minnesota fourth. Uh, Portland, believe it or not, is now the fifth seed. That would be an entertaining series against a team that's been a pretty big rival for us over the years, be it this or that. Um, pretty big frustration. They used to beat the crap out of the Wolves, but they're only three games above 500. Minnesota is 11 games above 500. 27 and 16. Reason for encouragement? Absolutely. Because when the Wolves come out and just knock the crap out of teams right at the get-go of games and they just hang on to that lead the whole night. We're not seeing 20-point leads disappear all of a sudden. That, that's not happening anymore. <sighs> We're seeing leads diminish because the fourth quarter, th- teams relax a little bit. You bring in the backups. Thibodeau, start bringing those backups in more, please, particularly in games like that. But <laughs> unless you're playing the Warriors or something, then, yeah, I can understand you want to keep that boot on the throat because you never know. But uh, it is what it is. This is a very, very long segment. So, man, well, eh, it's a little over. About five minutes longer than I normally do. Could be worse. Could be much worse. Uh, So, yeah, let's just keep rolling. Jimmy Butler, Alpha Wolf Award. Colonel Anthony Towns is honorable mention, a gold-plated honorable mention for the Alpha Wolf Award. Andrew Wiggins was wonderful throughout the week as well. Johnny Flynn Memorial, well... Belitza looks like crap still, unfortunately. Uh, Shabazz Muhammad can't get on the floor at all. And it, it's kind of sad. Uh, Marcus Georges Hunt plays a role, and that's about it. He looks a lot like Rashad McCants. He's not crazy and annoying like Rashad McCants. I'm not mad at anybody right now. Uh, Tyus Jones, I'm, there's no way I'm going to give him any Johnny Flynn. He was, he's wonderful. Uh, 
obviously Jeff Teague finally coming back. Uh, Johnny Flynn would be the uh, bad luck with it at the time, but then again, the wonderful luck that it wasn't a it wasn't a say, oh, bad luck injury, but wonderful luck that it wasn't a serious injury for Jeff Teague. So it's kind of like a combination of belly and Shabazz, I guess, for the Flynn Memorial. But Shabazz hasn't even had a chance to play, so I guess it's belly. I'm sorry, Nemanja, but I got to do it. Back to back, uh, back to back. Uh, Johnny Flynn Memorials for you. With that, we'll take our quick break, and we are going to preview four games against the Knicks. Uh-oh, Portland Trailblazers. It's a clash for that Western Conference home court advantage in the first round, at least. The Orlando Magic, who have stuck forever, but for some reason we almost never win there. Weird. So, yep, two home games, New York and Portland. Those are kind of cool. That'll be fun to see. Michael Beasley, who cares? Screw Michael Beasley. Uh, <laughs> Portland Trailblazers, always extremely entertaining battle with that backcourt. Oh, Orlando, who do they have? They have the Banana. So we're going to go visit the Banana again. That's his name, Alfred Payton. The Banana, I mean, look at his head. You don't think that's a banana? And I don't mean it in a bad way. If you take offense to it, shame on you, because I do not mean it that way. It's his hair. His hair looks like the top of a banana. So I call him the Banana for that reason. Please do not take it the wrong way, because there is no way in hell I mean it that way. That's the shape of his hair, for crying out loud. You're telling me that doesn't look like the top of a banana? It does. Uh, Wolves go to Chris Paul if he's healthy, if he's ever healthy. The bearded one, James E. Harton. James Harton is coming to town, or we're going to his town on TNT Thursday, Jan 18. TNT broadcast. All right. As the Vikings gear up for the NFC Championship game in a couple days on the 21st, God willing. (sighs) NFC Championship game against uh, the Philadelphia Eagles or Atlanta Hawks. Atlanta Hawks. Atlanta Falcons. It'll be a bird of some star. They'll be dirty or they'll be soaring. One of the two. Uh, The soaring Eagles or the dirty bird Falcons. Um, So we'll just worry about that when that happens. But uh, the Wolves will be playing the four games. We'll, We'll talk about that right after this. The Triforce of Timberwolves is beginning to resonate. And we are back here on Timberwolves Explosion, segment number two. Time to preview four games. New York Knicks, Portland Trailblazers, both at home. And then we head to Orlando, Florida, and Houston, Texas, where the Timberwolves will be on TNT. A nice test of a lot of things there. The bright lights and the tough opponent, and it's on the road. So, yeah, either we're going to get slaughtered or it's going to be a fun, entertaining battle, and just maybe we'll win. And a whole week later, just one little week later, the Minnesota Timberwolves return to TNT and go to Northern California to Oracle Arena, yeah, okay, we'll talk about that next week. Toronto's looking pretty Northern Cal-like lately. My God, what is up with the Cleveland Cavaliers? I think there's going to be a coaching change, and I have nothing against Tyron Lou. It's just that's how it is, you know. Something's up. I mean, the Cavaliers lost by like 30-something again last night to Toronto. Now Toronto's playing well, and the Timberwolves are playing well and all that. But 30-point losses are supposed to be foreign in this league if you're like a conference championship, NBA championship-level team. Uh, They shouldn't happen like two or three or four games in a row or something like that. That's getting kind of goofy. But let's digress back to where we were. New York Knicks come to town. They're fourth in the Atlantic, 19 and 22. They're kind of just mediocre, hanging in there, blah, blah, blah. Their starting point guard is Jared Jack. That guy's been hanging around for a while. Six assists a game. Enos Cantor, of course, traded from the Thunder in a three-team deal that got uh, the young uh, Sabonis, Dante Sabonis into Indiana and all that good stuff. Enos Cantor winds up in New York, and Paul George winds up going to the Oklahoma City Thunder. So, yeah, it's all just kind of what it is. It's a big mix of stuff. But some good moves as well. Courtney Lee's still around. He's a guy I was always a big fan of in the past. Three-point shooter, this and that. And, of course, the unicorn, Chris Stops Porzingis, the main attraction there in New York City. Tim Hardaway Jr. has been emerging nicely the last last year or so. Of course, he's missed about half the season, unfortunately. But averaging about 18 points a game. Porzingis, almost 24 a game. He's scorching the net for the most part. Not the best field goal percentage ever, but he's certainly a solid, good, solid player for the Knicks. Michael Beasley's emerged nicely. He's kind of back in the league and all that, and he's playing fairly well, about 12.5 a game for him. 
five rebounds, blah, blah, blah. He's only playing about 20 minutes, so he's instant offense off the bench, and he's doing a good job. Uh, he had a 34-point game the other week, and I was like, who cares? But then again, good for him. I, I, I'm not rooting against him, but I'm not rooting for him either. Put it that way. Courtney Lee is the top three-point threat, and he has been starting a shooting guard for most of the season, so good for him. Uh, 41 games, he's been healthy all season, and he's about 44% from beyond the arc, and about 14 points a game. A valuable guy. We wouldn't mind having him off the bench, guy like that. But then again, if he's starting, I don't blame him for wanting to be there instead. Uh, Ramon Sessions, will it be a Ramon Sessions sighting? He's missed a lot of time this year, only about 13 minutes a game, <laughs> and about three three points, blah, blah, blah. Barely gets in there. Joachim Noah's Dead man walking, there's that again. Walking dead, blah, blah, blah. He's, yeah, well, he's beyond a shell of himself. He's played in only six games and about six minutes per, so it's been it's been good, Joachim Noah. Um, it's kind of sad. And you pray to God and just get on your knees, hands, <laughs> get on your hands and knees and beg that it's not a result of Tom Thibodeau's uh, overplaying and all that. I hope and pray to God that we don't have similar results here in the coming years. I don't know. Um... Let's just get them. Let's just try to get some more blowouts, I guess, and then they won't have to play as much. <laughs> something like that, right? <laughs> yeah, I just, uh, yeah. Let's just pray to God that that's not something where we're headed, and all that. Doug McDermott, another three-point threat off the bench. Blah blah blah. Forty per, forty points or percent. Pardon me. Timberwolves should win this game. Obviously, the way the Wolves have been playing, there's almost no excuse. I don't need to really go in too much of an introduction of the Knicks, but it is the first time we played them this year, so. It's been a while. It's been a while. Uh, very, uh, very winnable game. No excuse. I think the Wolves will score points on the New York Knicks. Let's look at their recent activity. Uh, they've lost four out of their last five. They beat Dallas. So somebody beat Dallas. Somebody. A team that hasn't been playing well, and that's the Knicks. That's That figures. Yeah, Dallas is beating like actually halfway decent teams. The, uh, the Knicks lost to the Spurs, lost to Washington, got annihilated by Washington by 18 points. The Knicks barely lose to Miami by four, and then lose to Chicago by three. Chris Dunn's Chicago Poles. He's the, uh, you could just say Chris Dunn versus the Knicks, you know, at this point. <laughs> it's getting there. Uh, this is the, uh, of course, the start of the season, the January the 12th tonight, and then next, or not next Friday, but a Friday several weeks from now, March the 23rd, the Timberwolves will head to New York City. So there you go. I wouldn't be surprised if the Wolves split this series or swept it. I don't think we're going to lose. That would be bull crap. And that's not going to happen. Minnesota can score points on the Knicks, and I think they will. I think the Wolves will wind up winning this game. Something of the likes. 117 to 110. 117 to 108. We'll go with that. 117, 108. Uh, Wiggins, hopefully he continues what he's been doing. Butler's obviously the best player on the team. We know that. Carl Anthony Towns more than capable of putting up some serious numbers. The matchup with Cantor, he's had good games. He's had bad games against Enos Cantor. Uh, Cantor's kind of a headache sometimes uh, with Towns, but Towns is a different player since the last time these two played. So it's going to be very interesting to see how things turn out between Carl and Enos Cantor. That's an important battle right there, important matchup. Uh, Towns, or excuse me, uh, Butler versus Porzingis will be a lot of fun to watch. And, of course, you'll see uh, Mr. Taj Gibson on Porzingis a lot of the time as well. Uh, obviously, you like the physical battle with Taj, but, of course, Porzingis... Certainly quicker and more of a score, but the Wolves will win 117-108. So kind of more of a team effort in this one, I think. Don't be surprised to see Butler and Porzingis kind of have a nice little battle. Would love to see Wiggins go off, but it's hard to say. Just continue what he's been doing, Wiggins. Just continue that little uh, uptrend that he's been on. Uh, better defense, of course. Better team defense. You know, lately the Wolves haven't been allowing points, so it's like, why am I even saying 108 by the Knicks? Uh, let's go with something more of the likes of 110 to 95, something like that. That's what I think the final score will be. The Wolves will beat the New York Knicks. So, reciprocal here. The second place team in our division, the Northwest Division, the Portland Trailblazers, come to town. 22 and 19, of course. They come to town on January the 14th. In a couple of days from now, of course, that would be Sunday. Sunday, 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 after the Vikings eliminate the... Uh, <laughs> they at least they better the New Orleans Saints, Portland Trail Blazers. 8 p.m. home game against uh yep against the Blazers on ESPN. So that's cool. A little national television for the Wolves on Sunday night. That's nice uh, after a football Sunday, of course. Trail Blazers, we know them very well. Damian Lillard, C.J. McCollum, they've always been a pain in our <laughs> pain in our, a thorn in our back, thorn in our side for many years. 
but the Wolves had some good games against them recently. Uh, Alvarica Mino, of course, he is what he is. Uh, Damian Lillard. Alvarica Mino is ever beatable, but he's also a solid defender. Evan Turner's been hanging on there, but just kind of being mediocre as, as he is. Uh, obviously, it's all about Lillard and McCollum here. And, of course, Nurkic is a good player as well, traded away from the Denver Nuggets, but certainly has made a name for himself in Portland. Almost averaging a double-double, 15 points, 8 rebounds, about that range. It's a fun matchup, and of course, it's for the division championship right now, because forget about the Thunder, right? Well, Minnesota had a very entertaining game with Portland last time around. Jimmy Butler clutch at the end, making free throws, and ended up clinching the game, 108-107. Expect another very close uh, mono a mono type of battle. I do think Portland will get over 100, so I think that streak is going to come to an end. The Portland Trailblazers will eclipse the 100 mark versus the Wolves. Damian Lillard ever capable of scorching the net, getting 38 points against anybody. McCollum, when he gets hot, it's scary, and teams often lose when that guy gets hot because when he gets hot, he gets really, really, really hot. And, of course, it's always a personal battle between him and the Wolves because, of course, Minnesota passed on him in the draft. And, yeah, I don't know. I don't want to remember it anymore. I'm frustrated with that one. The Contavious Caldwell Pope draft, and the Wolves end up with Shabazz Muhammad and Gordy Jeng. Very happy with the Jeng uh, draft pick, but McCollum versus Shabazz Muhammad. Uh, <laughs> oh, wow. Mm, I don't even want to think about that right now because look at Shabazz. And I know all of you love Shabazz, or at least a lot of people do, but it ain't going well, folks. That's pretty true. Uh, there's a reason why the Blazers are in second. They recently beat the Oklahoma City Thunder 117-106. Look at Portland. Well, they got crushed by Cleveland on the on the 2nd of January. So Cleveland was still decent at the time. 17-point victory. And, of course, Portland was able to beat Atlanta and San Antonio recently. Wow, one-point victory over the Spurs. And then beat by nine by Houston most recently. The Blazers will play the New Orleans Pelicans before they play the Wolves. Winnable game by for Minnesota again. Heading to Portland is really tough. This is a game you really want to win. Will we win it? Uh, you know, it's tough. This is a tough one. Um, God, uh, the Wolves will play uh, very soon again, just 10 days later, January the 14th, a Wednesday, and then March the 1st, Thursday, March the 1st against Portland. Both of those will be in Portland, Oregon. This one, of course, again, in Target Center. <sighs> very entertaining mano a mano matchup on ESPN. I expect Andrew Wiggins to have a nice game. He usually does play well against the Pearl and Trailblazers, though it does reek of Jimmy Butler once again, who can score go ably against this club. He had 39 points, if I remember correctly, against the Blazers last time around. Quite an entertaining uh, battle. Oh, man, that was a fun, fun game. Wolves versus uh, Blazers. And it was 37, pardon me. Butler making free throws late in that one. 37 points. Exciting night. Uh, Jamal Crawford at 23 off the bench as well. Boy, where do you go with this one? It's it's a tough, 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 tough matchup. Uh, do the Wolves w lose this one and then take one in Portland? I'm kind of picking a, a split for the season between these two teams. That's kind of what I think it's going to be like. And if the Wolves do win the series, that's huge. That's huge. And the chances of winning the division are extremely good at that point. Not only for just, tell you won one more game than you lost in that case, but which is really ABC logic there. But it's also... Uh, <laughs> Mm, wow, interesting. Yeah, Hugh Darvish passed on a $160 million offer from the Yankees. Well, good luck to the Twins paying him that kind of money. But uh, hmm, where was I now? Uh, but no, it, it's a morale boost for the club, just like when the Wolves beat Cleveland. But now it's like, how, how, how much value is in that now with the way Toronto did the same thing? Even though Toronto is a good team, it's just they did the same thing. So, like if Cleveland beat Toronto the, the next game, wow, the value is pretty high because Toronto's playing very well. Back to the point... Wolves, boy, I don't know, man. I'm having a hard time. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Well, this club is playing very well right now. I like the momentum. I have to go with the win here. I, I have to. It's going to be very close once again. We're going to look at something of the likes of 110-106, 106-105, something like that. Very close game. Butler being what he is late in the game. Maybe Jamal Crawford hits a big three or something that helps ice it. Something like that. Um... Or Jeff Teague sinks some free throws late, as of course it's hung the likes of, again, we'll go like a one point, a three point victory, 106, 105, 110, 107, something like that. But the Portland Trailblazers will get 100 points against the Wolves, which has not been happening lately, which is great. Uh, beautiful streak here. The whole month of January, nobody scored 100 points against the Wolves. So 
That's a big freaking deal. The Lakers got 96. Brooklyn got 97. Uh, Boston only 91, but we still lost. That sucks. Uh, New Orleans 98. Cleveland 99. That was pretty close. Oklahoma City only 88. So an important statistic throughout the year of 2018 so far. But I think Portland will end that drought. Uh, who was the last one? The last one to score was the Denver Nuggets. That was 125, but the Wolves did win that game. A, that was the you-can't-bleep-with-me game. That wasn't the Laker game. It was Denver. You can't bleep with me. When uh, Butler went a bleep in a very fun game. So, nope, nope. Milwaukee was the last one. The Wolves lost. Yep, so 102. Milwaukee. So, Indiana, we ended the year in 2017 not giving up 100 points, and we haven't given up 100 since. So, beautiful. That's been the case. So, important statistic there to look at. That is eight games in a row, not allowing 100. I think the Wolves will keep the Knicks under 100, I believe, I hope. And the Portland Trailblazers will break that, unfortunately. That's my guess. Uh, I think the Wolves will keep the Orlando Magic under 100, even though they suck. Or, I mean, obviously they do suck. The Orlando Magic do suck. But even though it's a sucky matchup for the Wolves sometimes, going to Orlando, it's just weird. I, I don't know why, but it's always been a tough game there. Some places you just can't win very often. We're going against the uh, the banana, Alfred Payton. I remember I made fun of him back on Wednesday, the 22nd of November. That's Kennedy Day, we could call it, because unfortunately something happened on November 22nd, 1963. Something very sad happened in Dallas, Texas that day. We all probably have a pretty good idea what it is. Uh, Orlando Magic 12 and 30 on the season. They are just, you know, again, the Toronto Blue Jays of basketball because they start off really good it's like wow they're nine and seven they're nine and six whatever it is they're doing they're up to a good start they're 11 in this and now they're 12 and 30 they have been putrid ever since and the banana alfred payton and again please again do not take offense to it just look at his hair especially when he's you know when you're looking at him sideways so to speak like say you're watching the game and he's facing yeah yeah he looks like a banana with that hairdo it's the hair so, uh, Adrian Payne's on that club, but has, has, has he really played all year? Where is he? Where's this son of a gun? Five games, eight minutes, big deal. So, Adrian Payne's barely a, on that team. He probably, he's probably in the G League at this point. Aaron Gordon, obviously a very valuable individual who can scorch the net. He's killed the Wolves from downtown before, as has Fournier, uh, Ivan Fournier. Uh, both of those guys capable of shooting 40% and up. Even Alfred Payton, the banana, about 38% from downtown. But he can't make a free throw for his life because he can't see the the rim when he's shooting free throws because his hair is hitting him every time. So, I'm just being honest with you, all right? So, stop taking offense, damn it. Stop taking offense. I'm just, I'm just being honest with you. Jonathan Isaac, well, typical rookie season these days. You know, only the top guys seem to really step up right away. Rookies are Rookies start off slow. Like, look at Chris Dunn last year. Look at him this year. Big difference. Look at look at uh, 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 Zach Levine's rookie year compared to his second year. Not even close. Not even close. Wiggins started off decently, but he was the number one pick in the draft. So, hello. Cowan started off decently. He was the number one pick in the draft. Hello. He could go on forever. Marcus Smart. He started off like he didn't even belong in the league hardly. And then not too, you know, but like the next year, all of a sudden, he's this defensive stud and physical and capable of doing this and that. He still hasn't come close to his potential, though, I think in my humble opinion. Uh, very nice team, though, are the, not nice team, but some nice players on Orlando. Jonathan Simmons, he can score a bit, too. He's a guy that I liked in the offseason, but, of course, he went to Orlando, so good for him. Uh, Vucevic, not Vuvicic, but the, the other Nikola. I used to compare him with Pekovic, but obviously he's the better one. He is better, okay? Uh, better defensively, better overall, better moves, not just resorting to the baby hook all the time. I don't like this matchup, but Orlando sucks so hard right now. There's no excuse for the Wolves to lose this game. They have, of course, lost all five of their games. Their defense sucks for the most part. They lost. They give up 131 in regulation to Cleveland, but they stayed in the game, believe it or not, because Cleveland sucks right now. That was just a couple of days ago on Jan the 6th. Uh, Orlando has lost to Brooklyn, yuck, uh, torched by Houston by 18. Houston's good at winning by 18 points, I've noticed. Dallas Mavericks beat the Magic by 15 points. Yikes. Seven-point loss to the Milwaukee Brewers. Milwaukee Bucks recently, so... <laughs> they will, them being the Orlando Magic will play Washington before hosting the Minnesota Timberwolves. Um, I, I don't know, man. I don't know about this club. 
So uh, to put it short, this is going really long. I apologize, but the fan interaction, too. I got to get going here. Uh, the Minnesota Timberwolves will beat the Orlando Magic, something along the likes, because the Magic just suck. Uh, the Wolves should score a decent amount. That uh, hopefully just just hang on to the lead so we can rest the starters, please. That's all I'm asking in this one. Build a nice solid lead. Go up by make it like 107 to 90. I'm gonna go with that. The Wolves will win 107 to 90. I think they keep the Magic way down there. Nah, the Magic are capable of scoring. So 107 to 99, something like that. Nah, 117 to 99, Wolves will win the game. 90, 96, 99, something like that. Uh, Top score in the game. Doesn't even matter. Uh, Let's go with, I'm going to go with, I wouldn't be surprised if Crawford has like a big game in this one because he's probably going to get more playing time than some of the other guys because uh, I think the Wolves will build a nice solid lead and the Magic will kind of catch up a bit. That's my guess. Last time around, Butler led the team in scoring. But it was kind of everybody, like Taj Gibson, Carl Anthony, you know, and uh, even Jeff Teague. I'm going to go with Teague's going to have the, the top scoring in this game. He's going to have a nice breakout game after coming back from the injury. I expect Jeff Teague to have one of his nice, solid 20-point, 10-assist type of games. And Jeff Teague will be the best player. He will beat the banana nicely, like he did last time around. That's my humble opinion, even though the banana managed to get 13 assists in the game. So let's keep going. Houston Rockets, TNT. <sighs> I don't like it. I, I, I don't like this matchup very much. Uh, the Wolves are playing great basketball, phenomenal basketball, but Houston's like NBA championship material. They're a tough team to beat. Uh, they lost to Golden State by 10 recently on Jan the 4th. That's disappointing for them, and that was a home game. Ah, Houston, of course, beat Orlando, like I said earlier. They, uh, they lost to Detroit. Huh. In Detroit, though, by 7. Beat Chicago decently and beat Portland by 9. Very recently, they will play... Phoenix and the Clippers before they play the Wolves on national television on Thursday, the 18th of January. James Harden, of course, one of the leading scorers in the NBA, 32 points a game, 40% beyond the arc. He plays the old man game, kind of lulls you to sleep, and then just walks right by you. He literally just steps right around you, and that's what he does. And, of course, he gets to that free throw line, and he gets calls and this and that. He averages over 10 free throw attempts a game. Uh, Eric Gordon, capable of scorching the net, but his percentage, his percentage is down for some reason considerably from last year. Chris Paul can't stay healthy. That's one of the reasons the Wolves might win the game. Gerald Green back home in Houston, but he's only played eight games so far, but made 50% from beyond the arc. 16 points a game in that stretch. So nice emergence by Gerald Green having a little fun because, well, he's probably wide open. I mean, you got too many weapons there in Houston when they're freaking healthy. It's funny how Eric Gordon's managed to stay healthy, but of course Chris Paul never does. So that's kind of what that is. Trevor Ariza is obviously very valuable. Uh, spark plug type of player. Kind of, he kind of reminds me of Robert Ory a little bit, but I, I don't know if it's his clutch. Uh, Luke Richard, Mahmute, defensive specialist, Nene Hilario, energy veteran, big man who can drive you nuts and more than capable of doing some damage down low in limited minutes. Tariq Black, similar thing there, kind of a younger version, kind of, sort of, not as good. You could go on forever with that one. Uh, Clint Capella, Clint Capella also extremely valuable down low. He's been getting a lot of starts, and he's averaging a double-double a game. Good player, shot blocker, this and that. Houston's going to win the game, bottom line. The Minnesota Timberwolves winning streak will end. There'll be a nice long winning streak going into this game, but the Rockets will end it, unfortunately. And if the Wolves do beat Houston, oh my, get your NBA, get your Western Conference final tickets ready, at least. Uh, Wow. If the Wolves can beat the Rockets, that'd be pretty exciting. Uh, We we could have some bit of a playoff run if things keep up here. (laughs) But then again, it is January. No titles have been won in January, but... Yeah, it would be a very fun win for the Wolves. I'm not expecting it, though. Houston scores like there's no tomorrow. Big test for the Wolves' defense if they can keep the Rockets down to, like, under 110. That's pretty good. You got a shot at it because Houston's defense is not good. And, of course, the man formerly known as Pringles, Coach Pringles, because he doesn't have the mustache anymore, uh, not really known for defense in his coaching. So (laughs) that's uh, Mike D'Antoni, of course. Uh, Wolves will not win the game, though. I think Houston's going to get something. It's going to be like, shoot, 108 to 100, something like that. I think the Rockets will win the game. Butler's going to have a nice mono e mono type of battle with uh, James Harden. That's going to be fun to watch. That is going to be really fun. Both of them will score over 30. It's going to be back and forth. Maybe you'll see some cursing for Butler. You'll see, uh, you're going to see something of the likes. If the Wolves win, Butler's going to make like 20 free throws in the game. It'll be something like that, where Butler gets one call after another, gets around players, and frustrates the bleep out of James Harden. And that's how the Wolves would win the game. Carl versus uh, 
Capella will be a nice matchup. It'll be uh, compel. It'll be a compelling matchup between those two. <laughs> but uh, the Golden Star, we could say Capella, <laughs> the Golden Star you see in the sky in fall and winter every year. It's a, literally a gold star out up in the sky. Capella will. Capella's club will beat the Wolves, unfortunately, 108-100 or something along those lines, 110-105. to But it'll be a close battle, and Butler will score over 30 in the game. That'll wrap up this elongated section. I'm getting too wordy here. So we'll take a break, come back, and get to fan interaction. We are back for segment number three, Fan and Direction. Let's jump right into it right away. At Wolves Explosion, at Wolves Explosion is the Twitter account. And in Twitter, it's very quiet, but I really appreciate those of you retweeting the show. Levi Tene out of Levi and Tene Brown out of New Zealand and Vince Germano out of Melbourne. And of course, uh, the Courtside Podcast. Thank you very much for that. Yeah, for retweeting and telling your friends about the show. Greatly appreciate it. So let's move on to Facebook very quickly here. This thing is acting up royally, and it's annoying the heck out of me. Quick shout-out to Flips Army. The Flips Army Facebook page, Trevor Wickerin, kind enough to allow me to post links to Timberwolves Explosion on that page, so I'm more than obliged to give a shout-out to Flips Army and encourage you to join it. As a good number of you have. I know Tanae has, and Levi has, and others. Uh, <clears throat> thanks again for that, uh, Trevor. Also, nice in-game interaction. And, of course, just random Wolves news. I got a jersey, I got a, a Northern Lights jersey, this and that, conversation back and forth. It's fun. And, you know, if you, if you some stuff is some stuff's more interesting than others because obviously everybody posts this and that. Some posts are more interesting than others. In games are very fun to interact with people on there and curse and swear or cheer and be very excited as the Wolves uh, hopefully are crushing somebody rather than getting beat. So, yes, we leave off from the last show. No comments on that official thread, but thank you for liking the page there. Uh, I was talking about, I called it on the last show, the Wolves would end their drought against the Cavaliers, but I certainly didn't expect this. This team is playing extremely well right now. So, the comments are Vince Germano right here saying, liking it a lot. I'll be jumping on come playoff time, and thank you very much, Vince. Of course, he's a Lakers fan and many years on the Courtside Podcast. Lakers fan for a long time, but the Wolves have been a second favorite team since the early 90s when Luke Longley was the first Australian to break into the NBA. So, yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> um, hopefully the last couple segments weren't too long, but as Marcus used to say, it's good information. It's good information. Uh, Marcus the forecaster, and I appreciated when he said that, and I hope you guys feel the same, that it was good information. Levi says, Levi Brown says, didn't you also call Wiggins finally having a good scoring night? Yes, I did. Uh, not too far off his 30-point average against the Cavs. Yep, but he wound up with 25. I was saying it was destiny, my friend. Yep, it was definitely a night. It will be a springboard for this team. Oh, my God. So there it is. See, I, I already knew the title of the show before I knew that it was the title of the show. I didn't even realize that. I had already named it. That's interesting. But, yeah, it'll be a springboard for the team. I feel it now. For the first time since 2004. Yeah, I mean, I was picking us to lose the game, and then all of a sudden something came over me. I mean, something did come over me. I could feel something different, a powerful feeling with this team. Something's up. And, of course, the Wolves continue kicking butt against the uh, Oklahoma City Thunder. Pretty amazing. And here's Wayne Hunt. He was saying, where did all the, and Wayne Hunt is the alpha dog of the courtside podcast, is Wayne Hunt, Vince Germano, Wayne Hunt is from Sydney, and Stu Benson also forms a trifecta there on the courtside podcast. It was a trifecta a long time ago with BG. Brad Graham was another one. He was a writer for Buckets Magazine. That broke off for whatever reason that happened. And then... Years later, Stu Benson is, uh, has has joined. He's he'd, he'd been a, a faithful of the Courtside Podcast forever, and a, an occasional guest like myself. I'm an occasional guest, <laughs> you know. And it, when it's international, it's a little tougher. But when I get on, God, I have a blast. Oh, I love going on the Courtside Podcast, and and they know I do. And I've had Vince Germano on this show. I've had Hank McCoy on the show. Oh, Hank McCoy slash Wayne Hunt. Hank McCoy was his nickname for a long time. It was like a show nickname. Like I'm Paladino Joey. So I don't think I have to worry about losing that nickname or having to get rid of it for any reason. But unfortunately, <laughs> Wayne Hunt had to give up Hank McCoy. So bummer there. Um, he says, where did all the Coach Thib haters go all of a sudden? 
Tanae says, Tanae Brown says, oh, don't worry. A lot, <laughs> we're still out here on Twitter, even on a monster win like this. That's funny. Wow. And we've been actually keeping teams under 100. I do think this, the drought, uh, the, the, two, the 100 drought ends, unfortunately, against Portland. But that's just a guess. So the Wolves will still win the game. Wayne Hunt says, idiots. I think, I think they think you have to have a perfect season to be a good coach or something. Every team has ups and downs, though. Uh, through the season, pardon me. I'm just interested to see if Tibbs makes any moves now before the trade deadline. <clears throat> pardon me. It's possible, but I uh, should have hit the little quote-unquote dump button there. But <laughs> you could call it a dump button. <laughs> but uh, it's like a cough button, you could say. Uh, maybe. Um, there There is talks there after a big man, like a Jared Dudley, something like that. Uh, what was the other one? Nerland's Noel. The first Noel. The very first Noel in the NBA. There was the first Joel, Joel Anthony, but the Nerland's Noel is another one. Uh, salaries to match, this, that, who knows? Maybe Gorgie gets traded. I wouldn't be surprised if Shabazz gets traded because i got to think somebody out there thinks more highly of Shabazz Muhammad than just DNPing him all season. So Shabazz Muhammad getting traded is a, is a possibility. Uh, you wouldn't be getting much re- in return in terms of salary, so he would probably be a package with the Gorgie, which would be kind of sad to see the 2013 draft go bye-bye, but possible. I'm just saying, I'm just saying it's possible. Um, screw you, Cameron Jordan. It says he's looking to destroy the Vikings on Sunday. Yeah, well, we'll see. We'll see, Cameron, we'll see. And that's from a guy who's the son of Steve Jordan, the former legendary Vikings tight end, too. You son of a gun. Oh, well. Well, that's his job, so maybe I shouldn't complain too much about that. <sighs> so, let's continue. Uh, but yeah, Netherlands Noel, Jared Dudley are the two names that have been out there. Will it happen? I don't know. Uh, the Wolves have made only one trade so far, and it was a huge trade during the uh, Tom Thibodeau era. Huge trade that's ended up being pretty nice. Ended up working okay for Chicago, too. Uh, Markinen's good, obviously. Uh, Chris Dunn looks awfully good. And Zach Levine is still coming back. We'll see. Uh, ACL injuries tend to be 12-month injuries nowadays, which is insane. And, of course, uh, uh, well, uh, we need to see... Uh, Patton still play for the Wolves, so that'll be nice. Uh, one of these days, Patton will return. He's on the G League right now. One of these days, he'll be back, or he'll be at the with the actual with the big club here. But that's all. I'll wait and see where we can complete that trade. See how things are going in the next couple of years. But Jimmy Butler looks pretty damn legendary right now. <laughs> so a couple of posts here. So Friday, that was already yeah, that was last week from Vince Germano. Levi Brown has a nice post here. He says, "What an amazing game against the Cavs. I was watching." the game at work, so couldn't give my full attention to the game, but that was the most fun I've had watching a Wolves game for a long time. All the starters were great, and Tyler, that's Tyus, I'm guessing, had another great game without his box score telling the whole story. Exactly, exactly. See, his box score doesn't tell you much. It's not very sexy at all. It's like, it's usually like eight points, four assists, and two rebounds, but then the one stat that pops out sometimes is the steals. It's like four steals, three steals. Like, wow, that's pretty good. But generally speaking, yeah, he'll have a lot of really quiet uh, stat sheets that look almost the same as they would if he was averaging 20 minutes a game rather than 35. So, but still, he does a lot of little things, and he gets a lot of hockey assists too, where it's a pass that sets up the next pass. So stuff like that. Um, let's continue. He says, not saying Tyus should start, but definitely needs more minutes than T Te- when Teague returns. And so far, it's been that way. But then again, Teague's only played one game since returning, and with the uh, a knee that was almost, whew, almost done for the year. Yeah, uh, be careful with Teague, obviously. Tom Thibodeau, you don't want to see him playing 40 minutes a night you know, for probably the rest of the year. Yeah, I don't know. That was scary. Uh, next, next little paragraph here, it says, I know a lot of fans don't like him, and I can't see it happening at this point, but I would like to get Boz back in the rotation if he can somehow get his confidence back up, as I thought he brought a good spark off the bench last year. And he did. He did. Shabazz Muhammad does have, uh, uh, he's very capable offensively, so he's got a very nice offensive game where he could get 20 points at, at any given time. Sometimes the shot, shot selection is crap and his defense is really bad, so that's one of the things, but I don't know. He's just more, uh, him being Tom Thibodeau, I guess he's more confident in uh, Marcus George's hunt right now that he's not going to go out and uh, try to gun us, gun us to sleep, I guess, which is what the, one of the fear is to uh, uh, with uh, Shabazz Muhammad. Continuing, uh, Danae says, or excuse me, Levi says, maybe those four points in garbage time will start something for him. Probably not, especially with Belly back and Marcus Sturgis Hunt picking up minutes. Yeah, so 
it's kind of he's kind of between a rock and a hard place right now. Um, it's too bad. It was the first time in uh, Shabazz Muhammad's career that he got to play for the same coach <laughs> for two years in a row. So it's pretty crazy how things continue to change for uh, Shabazz Muhammad. You went from Adelman to Flip to Sam to Thibodeau. Just crazy because of Adelman retired. Flip, yeah, I mean, that's heartbreaking what happened with Flip. Uh, Sam Mitchell was the interim for a year. They let him go, brought in Tom Thibodeau. So it's it's tough. And, of course, Rubio went through the same thing. So, yeah, it's tough. I mean, you have to win a coach over. And it looked like he won over Thibodeau last year, late in the, uh, in the second half of the year. And nothing. So maybe it'll still happen. I have no idea. Ali Sidikai uh, writes for DunkingWithWolves.com. DunkingWithWolves.com. Gotta love what he writes. And he's he does a great job. Uh, he writes an article saying the Minnesota Tremors are starting to heat up. So big shout out to DunkingWithWolves.com from Ali Sidikai. Do read that article. It is more than worth it. I like to read the, these on my breaks at work. They're, they're nice. So there it is right there. The Wolves are starting to heat up. And boy, are they ever. Great article by Ali Sidikai writing for Dunking with Wolves. So that should do it for the fan interaction for this week. Uh, other than that, I'd like to encourage you to join the phone lines. 209-736-7877. 209-736-7877. It is a voicemail. Do treat it as such. Mention you're calling calling in for Timberwolves explosion to your statement, shout out, comment, question, and opine. It's about it's a three minute limit on that call because it's a voicemail. It really is. Uh, then there's the call now button. It goes through the same line through Facebook Messenger. You just simply join it that way, and it's a high, it's free no matter where you are in the world, as long as you have some type of Wi-Fi or cellular connection that works as internet, this type of thing. Data plan is what the words I should be saying. Uh, one quite quick thing, too, i got to give a shout-out to the Courtside Podcast. I already have, but I'm going to give continuing shout-out to it in terms of please do join the uh, – when your subscription to it, it's only $20 a year, so less than one small cup of Starbucks or Caribou, whatever, a month. So – that's pretty pretty inexpensive. Pretty inexpensive. Less than two bucks a month. So, twenty dollars a year. Uh, and I will be joining it one of these days as well. We've been talking about it for a while, off and on. But then again, we get our busy schedules and we <laughs> we don't don't interact for a while because of that. And you know that's why that's why sometimes the courtside some sometimes like I'm going to be on the show and then I can't be this and that. So there's things like that. Uh, sometimes they. Sometimes they're quieter with releases because of that, especially during the Christmas season. It was kind of crazy, but some some years are better than others, this and that. But uh, generally speaking, it's a 20-year subscription for the premium shows. Otherwise, you do get the free shows all the time on iTunes and Podbean. Uh, Podbean is where you do the subscription, so you could get both the free shows and the premium shows with Podbean. Otherwise, the free shows are on both Podbean and uh iTunes. So, of course, if you have Android, you're definitely going to go with Podbean for sure, no matter what, because there's no iTunes on Android. There's also uh, Double Twist, though, which I uh, endorse on this show for Timberwolves Explosion because it mirrors iTunes. But also Podbean, if you want the Courtside Podcast, and, of course, get that uh, one-year subscription for only 20 bucks. So, big, big shout-out there. Final way to get on the show is via audio submission. That's this one, of course. Uh, just use the uh, free... <laughs> free recording application on your smart device and uh, save it and of course email it to paladino live at yahoo.com paladino live at yahoo.com and i will uh, turn it into an mp3 file for via zamzar.com and put it on the show uh, the other route you could use too also is audacity on your laptop or desktop whatever it is uh, audacity is an editing application or program whatever for your computer, desktop, laptop, PC, Apple, whatever it is. Whatever it is, even any editing software you could use for audio, and you could do the audio submission that uh, that way. Uh, there's no limit to it, but five minutes is usually generally like an unwritten limit, we'll say, five, six minutes. But, uh, you know, but what, whatever it is, if it's a major show like State of the Timberwolves, you could go longer, especially certain people like Tanae Brown, Vince Germano, Wayne Hunt, all have the green light for that. Uh, Marcus the Porecaster would too, but I don't know if he's ever. Gonna, I don't know if he's ever going to do it. Oh, gone it, but one of these decades. So, yeah, that should pretty much wrap things up for this show. Thanks again. Please tell your friends about it. Please give a positive rating on iTunes if you could. It would be greatly appreciated. I'll give you a huge shout out and thank you right here on the air. Your yep. Yeah, any kind words you can say about the show are very helpful, and they are worth their weight in gold, as <laughs> the host of In All Airness would say, Adam Ryan. Great show as well out there on pod, on iTunes. So, In, in, in All Airness, NBA history during uh, Michael Jordan's career. Whew, that's fun to listen to. So, we will 
call it a day, call it a week, and hope for another 3-1 and one or 4-0 and a week for the Timberwolves. Wouldn't that be something? 